Hello and welcome to this uh, video. My name is David Thorne. In this uh, Swift UI video, it's more actually like in this Xcode uh, video, I'm going to show you how you can probably solve some of the errors that you might have because your project doesn't build, your project doesn't compile, your project doesn't install to your iPhone or your simulator or, or something like that. And you just can't understand why this is happening, okay? And you're like, I'm 100% certain my code is fine. The compiler says my code is fine, but it just keeps giving these really silly errors and saying this file doesn't exist or this doesn't work or that doesn't work. I mean, you literally cannot understand. It could just be written in another language completely. You just don't understand why, but everything is fine and you tried closing Xcode down, starting it again. You tried all of these things, but nothing works, okay? And, and I'm gonna help you try and fix this because this will fix nine out of 10 problems and maybe 90 out of 100 problems as well, maybe 95 out of 100 problems that you're going to get, all right? So it is, is a big thing. Now, let's just talk about the project folder, first of all. This is this sim test project. Inside of it has the assets, Content view, preview, sim app, uh, sim test app dot swift, sim test dot xcode proj folder. And this is the main folder that gets created when you say new project. All right. Now, there is also another project. There is also another folder on your uh, MacBook or your Mac Mini or your Mac device that contains all of the compiled data in order to run the simulator or run code with inside of the, uh, the, the, the Xcode environment, or to also help indexing all of your code to have code completion, everything like that. And this is called derived data. Now you might have seen before, people say go to project, then clean build, clean build folder. And that's basically exactly what it is. It's going to clean all of that build stuff that's done already but it's sometimes just not good enough, all right? And you need to really be explicitly explicit about it and clean it yourself. So how do you find out whether, where those files are located, located first of all, if they are not already with inside of your, uh, your folder, all right? And we're gonna go through this uh, a bit by bit. The first thing we'll do is go to Xcode up the top right left hand corner and just say settings, okay? And then come to the end of it on locations and here you're going to see derived data. This archives and command line tools we don't have to worry about for the time being. And what you can see here is that we've got uh, the, the derived data is in the default location. And there's two more others, relative and custom. We'll talk about the, the relative one, actually. And it's at users, David Thorne, library developer, Xcode derived data. This is the standard place that it's going to be saved to. All right. And so... We don't really necessarily need to go into that folder, all right? But we, we will, just to show you, and when we go inside of it, you'll see here that sim test dash and then just load a random gobbledygook after it. This is your one project directory, and it just makes sure it's unique all the time to the project you're working on, okay? So every single time you build, you run, and you make any changes to your code, all of these changes are going in here. Now, I'm on the assumption that it, when it says clean build folder, this is what it means, all right? But like I said, sometimes this is just not enough and you have to do it manually, all right? And the best way to do it manually is when you're on a big project, this is like go and get a coffee type thing. Delete it, press uh, build again or run and just let it build and run again and go and get a coffee and come back. And uh, the likelihood is it, it would have fixed it. Now, sometimes you... You might have to do it a couple of times. I don't know why, but you just got to keep doing this until it works again. And I, and I promise you, it works. I promise you, it works. So um, you you have this one. Uh, you you'll have all all sorts of different errors, right? And you've tried checking all your code and making sure your your code is correct. So you come here, open up a product, go to clean build folder. Now I'm not pressing the option key, but when I press the option key, you'll see it changes, and we get clean build folder immediately all right and it's clean build folder is just not enough hold down the option key and just do clean build folder and we still see everything is there all right but it just isn't enough if you really want this hardcore redo everything just come to it and, and move to bin and get rid of that folder 
outright okay and when we come back to xcode and run it again look it just comes back again don't worry about it you're not going to lose anything but this will solve most of your problems and more than likely all of your problems okay so if you want to change the location of it and and i would and i wouldn't recommend this it it can be a little bit annoying to delete all the derived data for all of your projects if you have if you have your MacBook and you're working for an agency or something like that and you have a whole bunch of different projects that you work on all the time, it's not totally a wise idea always just to dump your whole derived data uh, folder. But it, what, what is possibly worthwhile doing if you work on lots of projects is doing on a relative basis. Now let's just close this one down again and let's uh, run the project once again and now come back to our project and you can see here that within inside of our sim test folder a derived data folder has been created okay now we can move this to the bin inside of the actual derived data folder here from the Xcode one and we can build and run this once again and come back to find it you see that it's not being created because the derived data is now in a relative basis in your project folder okay and this is a much better idea like I said if you are working on multiple different projects all the time for different customers and stuff this is the better way to do it but make sure that you don't add this derived data to your version control okay this wants to be added to your git ignore uh, and you don't want to be pushing this to to the servers because it's a whole bunch of files that you just don't need so when you do do it make sure you have a git ignore file a file in there that says hey ignore derived data outright now otherwise uh, otherwise you change your your custom path to somewhere else but i would have i would advise this this work process no one's going to be working on 100 projects you might work on maybe two or three at any one time and then you might have to then suddenly work on another project for a bug fix or something and there there you can just do it do it however all right but I always try and just go through my projects and delete the derived data. It's like node modules or vendor in other uh, programming languages and, and so on. So this is the place to come to just do, just do a purge, a reset on your project and just make sure you delete the derived data uh, and so on. All right. Uh, but basically, this is the only folder that needs to be deleted. And I promise you, like I said, uh, most of the time this will solve your problem outright. Um, and so let's just go back to uh, the Xcode settings and uh, I'm going to put it back to the default location because I much prefer to have um, it, it located there because I just dump the whole derived data uh, in one swoop because I'm only working on a couple of applications every now and again. Uh, so it doesn't really bother me too much. Other than that, uh, you can define your own path or name of the folder and so on uh, or other uh, custom places on on your device where you want it you might want a hard on a hard drive but remember it, it wants to be pretty quick at reading as well because this is reading and writing all the time so you want to have it on an ssd at least the the the, the read and the write on here needs to be really fast uh, when it's being done that's why i would advise having it uh, located on your your mac mac mini because that is an ssd anyway all right with that said i hope that you've got something out of this one video i promise you this will be the first thing to check every single time when you have a problem okay this is always most mostly this is the main cause for most of your problems all right with that said uh, thank you very much for watching i hope you've learned something uh, from this one video and i hope this video saves you a lot of time in the future because i promise you it will um, just remember if you've got a big project uh, you are going to have to take five ten minutes or however long uh, to recompile <laughs> recompile your project if you don't have uh, one of the the better um, uh, chips or on your, your 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 computer your mac and so on all right so so do it do it knowing full well that if you've got an old Intel chip or something like that and your project's a big project, it's going to take 10 minutes to recompile everything once again. All right, I've been there and seen them and done it. Okay, um, if you've got any questions, feedback or concerns, let's start a conversation in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and do all of the other social media things out there that you can possibly do. My name's David Thorne. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao and goodbye.